Um, for me, I, not really. I signed up. Sorry, to be quiet, please. Um, I <laughs> signed up for Screenbox. I dedicated myself. I said, I'm paying for a year. Fuck it. We're doing it live. And I'm actually really excited about a bunch of stuff that I've seen on there because Shudder, I love Shudder. Shudder has gowns, beautiful gowns. Um, but <laughs> sometimes I feel like that's all they have. Very pretty stuff to look at, like very criterion selection. And I miss my cheese. I miss my stupid shit. And so Screenbox was like, hey, bitch, I got all that shit you need right here. I started watching The Imitation, starring... The vampire Miss one or the older one? The vampire one. Okay. With Miss and Day, and I shouldn't really know her real name. She's so beautiful. Uh, from the one, she was uh, uh, Daenerys's like right right okay. hand woman. Then I know. Yeah. And she screwed the the Grey Worm, which I thought he was castrated. So I don't know how that worked. But I he has cast... other things he can stick up in there. It's fine because they are castrated. <laughs> they are cast. Yeah, but is castrated mean they take the whole thing off, or is it just the balls? Castrated is usually the balls. Um, eunuch and... is usually all of it. Oh, okay. So I guess so. It does it still work without your balls? We have to ask George R. R. Martin. <laughs> it, it will, it does... I don't want to. I don't want to Google that. I do not want that I love, in my Google. I love search. how she asked both of us, and we're like, "Well, weirdly, yeah. we still have our balls." Yeah. So. Lance, last don't... time you lost yours. Yeah. I... Well. Okay. So here's I what I don't I'm gonna have say. a penis. I have to ask. I you. believe <laughs> you can get an erection. Okay. It's all because of blood flow testosterone determines the sex drive which is where your balls come in also this is disgusting i'm sorry i know but dogs that are neutered will still get red rockets which is why i'm saying you can probably get an erection if you don't oh, have balls. that's <laughs> right they do you're right because my old dog bless his heart he, he died but uh, he, he had a big old boner oh my god it was a box oh i didn't and... mean that kind of dog i meant like a da double g <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, shocky. The correlation for dogs and men. <laughs> yeah. Again. Who did you just find out was in their sixty? Oh, Jennifer Tilly is sixty-five. Oh, but yeah. she's amazing. I love her. Oh my god, I want to be her. She's amazing. She still looks good right now. Good lord. Yeah. I love her and the new Chucky show. It's so good. Actually, right before you got on, Mikey, Lance, who was I talking about? Because now I can't remember, but I'm like pissed that I didn't think about her. Oh, uh, Pollyanna McIntosh. We should have mm -hmm. done the woman. Mm. We've, but yeah, no, definitely she's done a lot, but um, we we shout, shouted her out a couple of weeks ago for something. I forgot what Did... it was. We talked about her for a well, little Well, if you guys want to do it, we could always, you know, next month, or no, no, next month, but the next episode. Or, you know? or we could do like a Lucky McKee month and do his movies because she's in so many of them. And we could do May and The Woman. You know what's a sin who we haven't done is Pam Greer. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and Doug loves her. I'm surprised we haven't done her yet. Everyone loves Pam Greer. She's another one that's up in age, but it's still beautiful. Oh, I love her yeah. to death. I, well, actually, we talked a lot about Pam Greer when we... Um, we interviewed Darren Stein and did Jawbreaker because she's a, she's the cop in Jawbreaker. Mm -hmm. The detective. Yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love her. Hey, and we come back full circle to Rose McGowan. And Rose McGowan, <laughs> and once again, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, she's great in um, what was it uh, the uh, Escape from L.A. <laughs> yeah, she's in there with she has like, the deep man voice. <laughs> the one yeah. that I haven't seen, which is funny, because the first time I got introduced to Pam Pam Greer was in a movie that she wasn't even in, but Urban Legends. When the oh, yeah. um, what's her name? She's really sweet lady with the high pitched voice. She's from Houston. Urban Legends, the detective, the really funny oh. one who watches the Pam Greer movies throughout the whole oh, thing. She's like, that's my sister, baby, and she a whole lot of woman. Uh, Loretta <laughs> Devine, who uh, is oh, okay. one of the original cast of Dreamgirls on Broadway, I believe. So she's an amazing singer. But um, Loretta Devine, all in Urban Legends, she watches Coffee and a bunch of other Pam oh, movies, yeah. and so she's always <laughs> quoting her, and so <laughs> that's, and she lives at the end, so shout out to Loretta Devine and Urban Legends for Women's Month and Pam Greer. <laughs> this is Slasher, is your favorite horror podcast and your favorite horror media. Uh, I'm your host, Lance, and as always, I am joined by my extremely amazing colleagues and cohorts, Aid and Mikey. Say hi, folks. Hello, everybody. Hi, y'all. Hi. How's it going? 
Sorry, I can't talk. I don't know. I was just, I was throwing off. We got the country in. <laughs> Hi, y'all. Hey, yeah, no, I don't know. Lance and his movie phone voice always throws me off. So I'm like, oh, crap. Sorry. Oh, yeah. my pH balance. That's what it throws off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are here back to start our third installment uh, of the Women's March, month of March, <laughs> Women's Month of March. I guess it would be. Do we come up with a different name? I always forget. You guys kind of. We did, but it's kind of offensive. So if you want to say women's hysteria, (laughs) I do not want to say offensive stuff. (laughs) March of hysteria. (laughs) March of hysteria. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, today's episode is going to be Jennifer's body. I don't know. Right off the bat, kind of deal at a question. do you find this? Because I, I, I kind of realized that it, it 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 didn't do as well, like when it came out, I guess, like, you know, like audience wise and whatever. But it's kind of become kind of a cult film. Do you feel like that's kind of like where, again, another movie that we've kind of watched before that's kind of the popularity comes slower as it goes on, like, you know, as it gets older? Yeah, kind of like Grindhouse. But it, so I saw it when it came out in theaters and I have just like a lot of emotional connection with this movie because of just I'll get into it later so my viewpoint of it is might be a little obscure but um I know that they've recently discussed it all with Megan Fox Diablo Cody and people that were involved in the movie and I agree that it was advertised as something that it is not um Mm. it was advertised as hey here's Megan Fox being sexy I hate the cover of this movie with her on the desk and it says hell yes in the back that yeah, has, yeah, on the chalkboard. That, that has nothing to do with the movie, in my opinion. I think this movie is much deeper and emotional and about friendships and about like girls in general. And yeah. they really wanted to just bring a bunch of men in and be like, here's Jennifer. I mean, here's Megan Fox. I do realize that this has become a huge cult following because a lot of women, especially over the years, have realized that this is actually a very feminist horror as well as you know it is a horror comedy and it is a huge product of its time like it Mm. is basically it's at the tail end of the early 2000s so we're in 2009 and you have to remember like if you you remember that how offensive the early 2000s were right and how we spoke to each other i mean there are a couple of f-bombs dropped in the movie there's a lot of um Thanks, Chris Pratt. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it was Chris Pratt. <laughs> exactly. I, why am I not surprised? And I so I say that all the time. <laughs> Lego, Le- 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 my. F- go. I think that it was it was a perfect picture of its time, like especially with the music. The music. Oh my god. That's gosh. what I was gonna say. That was like my next question, really, because like I know, Mikey, you're like a. If it doesn't have a good soundtrack, you pretty much you're kind of like dead in the water with it most of the times. And yeah. there's even a, a song on there that was actually a Screeching Weasel song, which is I forgot that was even in there. And like it's a cover song, but it's by a, a punk band, which is actually a band that's c- technically canceled now because he actually uh, punched a girl at a show. What would she do? <gasps> well, she was saying something. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> I, he he said it i didn't folks so like, <laughs> he, he he's got the card i guess and he'll be able to say that and get out of it <laughs> but but like legitimately like it, it was one of those weird things where you're like you're like oh man it's such a weird thing because this movie is such a cool like you said feminist movie but then to have a soundtrack and then have that band on there you know where most people would be like why is that on here <laughs> but other than that a lot of the music is really amazingly awesome and 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 very mixed like with genres mm-hmm. It's very strange to think that this movie came out after I graduated because this movie, like there is so much that is creepy that I'm like, this was high school yeah. down to, I had two friends, one they and I need to show y'all pictures of them. They look just like Needy and Jennifer. I mean, <laughs> actual teenage versions, not, you know, early yeah. 20 starlets playing them. <laughs> and they had the exact same personalities, which I think is why I have a major issue with this movie that I'll explain later. Because if Jennifer and Needy had not a best friend, but just like a good friend on the side that was a gay guy, that was me and my two friends in high school. And oh, nice. it's down to Needy's boyfriend being in a band named Chip. For the sake of not keeping things anonymous, my friend who would be needy had a boyfriend in a band named Kip. 
and it was Kip. it's so yeah it's so <laughs> crazy <laughs> that's and hilarious Sometimes I was a little bit Jennifer. Sometimes I was a little bit needy. Today, when I was watching it, I realized I was like, man, this came out after I graduated. But yet so much of this is exactly how it was in high school, at least here in South in Central Texas. But <laughs> yeah, there was, you know, the very clicky kids. Yeah, because I graduated in 06. So this, this came out three years later. But it was clearly like that time in high school was just so one way. Like, I can't, I, I, I mean, maybe the kids nowadays think the same thing. I don't know. But I can't imagine like any other time that was more iconic in the 2000s than the early 2000s because the outfits, the music, everybody listened to everything. Like it wasn't yeah. like there was just like one, you know, one genre for one person and just the 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 clothes, the outfits. Oh my yeah, God, the, the ugly ass. The, oh yeah, the the those jeans. I had every pair of those jeans. Like I, I mean, let's just. I, I was totally. I mean, maybe I wasn't as hot as her, but I was definitely Jennifer. Um, but needy, like I, that purple, that ugly fucking purple top she wore. At oh the my beginning god, of the show. This is my rock look. <laughs> I was like, that's me before going to see Lance's band in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we can wear it at wolf pub <laughs> mm. um but yeah no like literally i had that top and i'm like ah <laughs> i wouldn't have worn the shirt underneath it but that's just me we kind of find ourselves in a kind of small town i think their biggest uh was it a, their biggest kind of like landmark i guess would be or maybe their tourist thing would be the mm -hmm. uh the waterfall that goes into a, I guess it's not like a sinkhole or like a I don't know but it's like they're in a little town called uh what is it Devil's uh Kettle Devil's Kettle <laughs> yeah because yeah. they were the like Devil's, Devil's Devil's Lake Devil's it's Lake. Devil's <laughs> Kettle fuck yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> this is great because like like you know what? I think this is another movie that Adam Brody <laughs> sucked me into initially just because I saw he was in it and I was kind of like, oh, that guy's funny. I like him. He's great. It's a horror movie. And I was like, Megan Fox. So I was like, all right, well, this is kind of work. Basically, you find yourself in a town. Uh, you see the two best friends. You see that there's a, a dynamic between them. One's kind of like the popular girl. The other girl isn't, I wouldn't say nerdy, but I, I also wouldn't say she's the most popular person. She's just kind of under the radar kind of vibe, I guess, you know, I mean, would you guys think yeah. that? Well, and that's the thing too, is that it's like, the, there's nothing like unattractive about Needy, except for the fact that she subdues herself because of Jennifer, right? Like she doesn't, mm -hmm. she can she only look as good, look so good because she can't upstage Jennifer and she's happy to, to stay back and let Jennifer have the spotlight. There's a couple of things, reasons why I think this movie didn't initially become a big success. One is because Diablo Cody's writing is polarizing. I'm in the middle. There's some things that work that I still quote to this day with this movie that I think are hilarious and I love it. But sometimes it's like, okay, you stop there. You don't have to include something in every, but like the lesbi gay thing wasn't really that funny. And there's a couple of things where, you know, like when she pulls down um, Kyle Gardner's pants and she's like, nice hardware ace. It's like, okay, we didn't really need that either because it no. takes away from the serious <laughs> moment. Um, so it, her writing is polarizing, but also, unfortunately, the Rose McGowan effect, Megan Fox is polarizing as well for no reason. Like Rose McGowan, maybe it just comes from, unfortunately, really extremely attractive people get shit on for no reason. I can speak from experience. Hey, let me tell you about this. So when... <laughs> They end up going to the uh, the bar, which they they express that it's not really a venue; it's a it's a bar that plays shows, which I thought was kind of funny. As somebody who plays in in bars a lot, <laughs> it's definitely just you're in your brain going, "You want to make it like sound like it's a a, a venue, but it's not." Like, I think that um, happens more often than not. Like, I mean, how many you guys you guys have been to many shows? I'm sure at a bar instead of a venue, you know, <laughs> like oh, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, especially at this age. When they're leaving for the bar, even more parallel to my life, this is where I turn into a little bit of Jennifer. I treated my friend's boyfriend the way Jennifer treats Chip because I even <laughs> called him Chip after this movie came out and he hated it. And <laughs> down to the line of, you're just jealous. You're lime green jello and you can't even admit it to yourself. And he'd be like, what the fuck does that even mean? Um, and then my friend and I, whenever we would go out, because this movie came out, was I in college? I think I was still in college. And we'd go out and we'd be like, guess who has the Sebring till eight? 
It wouldn't have <laughs> nothing to do. We had our own cars and we were out till like two in the morning. But every time I'd pick her up, we'd always see it, uh, sing it. And actually looking at her Facebook, because I was going to show you the picture of me and those two girls I was talking about. The last thing that we shared to each other was in February. I posted on her page, Can We Handle? And it's an article that says, Diablo Cody pan plans to bring Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried back for Jennifer's Body sequel, prequel, or musical. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. I saw that. I'm actually really excited because I think that would, I think it would really work now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want a musical, but I think. No. Well, actually. I think a sequel would be fun. If we're staying with the same kind of music that we included in this movie, I think it'd be super cool because they have legit good music. Um, it would be kind of cool to see the in-between, like uh, yeah. what happens to the band, like what was going on with the band, like yeah. from that little spam because in that idea, uh, to catch anybody else up, it's basically uh, we find ourselves with this band that's playing there. She's into the band, and then we kind of find out in the midst of it that this band's kind of looking for a virgin, and they need somebody. And it seems like a very nefarious kind of like act that's going about to happen, or it's just band guys being really weird and <laughs> just yeah, looking for a, a, a virgin in, in a small town, and. And the, the, their interaction is very band-like for me, which is kind of funny because, like, you know, the bass player is kind of like, I'm a person, you know, I have oh, feelings. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, well, like, well, you're like a Satanistic group of guys trying to <laughs> murder somebody. But, or you know. Guyliner. Yeah, all sorts of guyliner. <laughs> I just think uh, the song had, um, like, trance kind of vibes because it kind of came off a little bit like, she was zoned out you know what i mean like even when the fire was going on she seemed like kind of mesmerized by the thing do you think that was because they, they didn't really make it like they didn't say it but it kind of came off like they tranced her because that was the person they were trying to get it did kind of insinuate that there was some sort of like supernatural force at play but also you know when you're this age and when you are going to these venues seeing these bands and you're it's a small group and you're right up front and you talk to them and they look at you and they're singing there is a strange i don't know maybe it happens also when you're an adult but here i am with responsibilities and i'm able to go have fun with myself but <laughs> that scene also made me a little emotional watching it these days because i remember that feeling i remember yeah. being with your friends and you're actually seeing live music and you're just like oh you know you kind of like fall in love through the airwaves as cheesy as that is but also, when she's not noticing the fire around her, then it's like, okay, yeah, well, something, else, yeah, yeah. something else is going on. Well, I didn't, I, you know what? I didn't think about that until you actually said that. But now that you're saying that, I'm thinking it's, it's the same kind of deal throughout the movie. Because the townspeople are like, the townspeople. Do we even know? Like, we know it's in Devil's Kettle, but where is that? Um, the townsfolk, they're like obsessed with the song, right? Yeah, and and my one of my favorite parts of the movie is when she's trying to get away from uh, having uh, after she's had sex with the little skinny guy, and she gets in the car and turns on the car and the song's playing on the radio and she starts. Oh, she's so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. So yeah, I, I you know so obviously it's not affecting her the same way, and you could see that if you now now that you said that I could see that at the bar especially during the fire because not everybody noticed. Like only a couple of people in the bar noticed the fire. It was literally the bartender and her. I mean, would if either one of you let her in that van? Like, regardless of the situation, like the fact that it's fire has happened and everything that's blowing up and all these other things, it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, kind of like, uh, how good of a friend are you? Would you allow that to happen to your friend? As an adult, no, I would not. As a hormone driven teenager, being like, yeah, True. go get it, girl. Yeah. I may have, especially if she talked to me the way that she talked to Needy. Like she, you couldn't convince her otherwise. Do yeah. you put yourself in danger also and go with her and have like a last house on the left situation going on? Or do you <laughs> wait for the police and be like, my friends just went with these weird guys. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like, you know, you, whenever you have to fight for someone's honor per last episode, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Oh my God. Yeah. True. Anyway. I mean, really, honestly. Well, yeah, and that's the. It's just interesting because it can, I love that you mentioned that that age difference because it, I think that's what really shows how immature they really are, right? Like they're yeah. not really understanding the gravity of the situation, and yeah. also the fact that they just really it's 
you know, and, and this is how kids are like they, something terrible happens, but you know, the next week they're, they've moved on and they show this in the film. Yeah. And the, the fact that there's so many razor flip phones in this, I was like, mm. wow, this is so 2009. Like, it's just like, it's weird how sometimes technology will make you go, Oh, wow. This yeah. is a while back. <laughs> like, But that's what makes this movie so great too, because they, these kids are not on their phones. Like, yeah, like a bunch of idiots sitting around not talking to each other like they use the phone to call each other at the very you know maybe text every now and again and just the satisfaction when you hang up on somebody when you slam the phone shot i'm never gonna have that again i feel like especially to be a feminist movie they were smart to steer away from the gaslighting because mm. girls don't need to gaslight each other she mm -hmm. tries one time very small she's like wow needy you should really get those thoughts of yours checked out by somebody and that's yeah. it and I like that they didn't do the whole ish, like too much of is she crazy or is she not? Because no offense, but that usually only comes in whenever men are involved. <laughs> no, that is that is true. And yeah, but her boyfriend obviously doesn't believe her, right? And so that makes sense. Well, he didn't say he I didn't love... believe her. He said he didn't believe the situation. He didn't yeah, the situation. I, I do like the way he said that, or like at least yeah. what was written for him was like, I thought it was great because it was like, he's like, it's not that I don't believe you. The situation sounds crazy to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I like I do like that because it it, it kind of steps away from the the normal normal bullshit that guys get tagged with. I mean, not that I'm saying it doesn't happen. Obviously, it's quite a lot, and men are very horrible yeah. in that sense of that way sometimes. Mm. But like I I do like the fact that she made an effort to where it doesn't seem like it's just like hey we're just trashing on men. It's more of like a a humanality kind of thing where it's like not everybody's the same because obviously she likes him for a reason. He's not the normal kind of guy. So I kind of like the fact that he said something kind of not so jock guy like, you know what I mean? Or whatever pigeon yeah. most men get nailed with. And also we don't have, if you think about Kyle Goldner and Chip, I don't know the actor's <laughs> name, he plays Chip, but these are both, I, I want to say they're the two forefront, even though Kyle Goldner isn't in most of it, but they're not the typical like bro jocks, but they're also like nice, good guys. Um. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have like the jock that does die, but he's barely in it. Um, and he's just more of like a source of food. And then the ones that are actually like the really bad guys are like the emo, like soft mm. band boys. This is almost like Halloween kills all over again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer's body. I love it. It kind of makes me a little nostalgic, but also there is like, a sadness that comes with it not from the movie or maybe a little bit from the movie itself but also like in high school I don't know how y'all's experience was but there was a lot of drugs around when I went to this high school it was fairly new it was on the rich side of town and so we were known for having the highest rate of STDs and for having the most money for mm -hmm. drugs so <laughs> with that a lot Same. of people that I knew <laughs> passed away in high yeah. school and shortly after and even my mom one time was like I have no idea like what is happening with your friends. She trusted me because I've said this before, I had really bad anxiety. So I never really did anything outside of like marijuana and drinking. Um, but like, I remember she took me to a party one time and I showed up and there was people just on the floor with needles sticking out of their arms. Like these were like hard drugs in my high school. And so watching this, I like to take movies for face value. I don't like to look too deep into the meanings. But it's almost as if if you replace Jennifer's need for a body to eat with drugs, it's almost yeah. like a drug movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's killing other people. And so well, she definitely has the, that that vibe where she looks like shit when she's mm -hmm. she runs low. So I, I get what you're hit. saying with that. Yeah. Like, it's just like she needs another hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. And I think that brings me to my biggest issue of the movie is this would probably be my favorite movie ever if she didn't kill Jennifer because that's yeah. its biggest flaw is mm -hmm. that this is not her fault she turns into a monster and kills people yeah that's terrible but also everything why are we focusing on stopping her when you should be like hey bitch I got you let's go find these goes with guy liner and kill them <laughs> don't worry I'll bleep it out in 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 the in the in the kind of a spoiler moment here coming is in the end factor of this that's what she ends up doing yeah, you know what i mean herself. And, yeah well no and exactly it's it, it's one of those things but i, I and 
even even Jennifer makes a comment where like in the beginning she's like I couldn't do it to you, like I came in there she like when she first initially goes there she she could have just fucking murdered her and ate her. Even though Needy stabs her with the or the no but the boyfriend stabbed her with the, the yeah I think she healed spear. from that <clears throat> the javelin yeah. yeah well yeah. whatever no she heals from it but like Jennifer doesn't do anything to her she just pulls it out she probably knows that she can't win at that point or maybe she can but she's she just looked at it oh we're just fighting so it's no big deal i'm leaving like yeah. i don't care that i just killed your boyfriend like no, no big deal like it's not like it did anything really that bad like that's how jennifer sees it because they probably Playground fight like stuff. this all the time yeah they fight like <laughs> this all the time and that's how you know me and my friends were in high school like we all constantly like we'd be best friends one day and then we'd be screaming and having fucking matches bowing never fighting see matches. each other oh my. like no like 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 fight matches like know, we were just, just like thought... screaming matches yeah and just like yeah whatever <laughs> like next week we pass a note in class like i'm sorry let's go blah 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 here tonight and we're like okay fine and hug and, and just be over it right like that's literally how it was and so you see that a lot in this and so i think that's a it's kind of an endearing part of the film especially after that when when needy goes after her because like needy only goes after her because she killed her boyfriend like let's yeah. be honest and does needy really like her boyfriend i don't know i think that she has more of an attachment to jennifer and maybe not a lesbian or you know like a love attachment but more of an infatuation i need you because they are codependent out of curiosity because i've always wondered about this because of the the lesbian comment in the beginning and then they they their friends because like in general women on women's friendships are so close that like you know a woman and a woman holding hands on a regular day basis doesn't throw anybody off it's like it is what it is you don't actually have to be quote unquote gay to be holding each other's hands or next to each other or whatever yeah. and, and it's changed a lot now with men which i, I love because it, it, it sucks that men can't be that you know close to their other guy friends but at the same time in this time 2009 women were able to get away with a lot more shit like that without any persecution to it to some degree or almost all degrees really but the the part where they threw in the um, kissing and in the bed scene like after uh the gothic kid or whatever it was and she saw her in the street the car scene and then she yeah. jumps on the car and rolls away but she's in there and then she's just making out with her and i remember like and there's this whole like scene and you're thinking to yourself going is this part of the storyline or is this like some stupid guys moment or some producer who goes we need to have a kissing scene with the two girls you know what i mean like I, I, i've always questioned that part i'm not a woman so i can't speak on a woman's perspective but i have had a lot of friends that are girls that are very close and i do know that there comes a point when a few of them have been so close that they're like you're my ride or die like you're my life partner is it romantic i don't think so and they might try something for like a week but then it just ends because like, nope, that was not romantic. <laughs> and I think scientifically from what, because I listen to a lot of science podcasts and stuff like this, a woman's, yeah. a woman's sexuality is never actually defined in her life. It's very fluid. Sure, you have women that are only into men. That's fine. You've had women that are only into women. But it's you'll find women that have been married to men their whole lives and then their husband passes away. And when they're older, they end up being with the woman for the remainder of their life and it's just yeah yeah that's just how their how their sexuality has been studied uh men tend to have a defined sexuality pretty early on in life which is why i'm not saying that you know guys can't be like affectionate with each other but which is why you typically don't see much of oh you know i'm drowning in pussy all of a sudden let me go try a dick um right at least for a romantic partnership, you know, so sex is different than relationships. Um, so I don't think it's unrealistic for them to do this. Um, again, teenagers, hormones being weird and <laughs> having like an extreme love for somebody like this is like a I've college moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've definitely like have been in a relationship where I feel so close to someone where I'm like, is this romantic or do I just feel like an extreme bond with this person? And, right. you know, maybe they were, maybe that's kind of what led to it. I don't think it was anything perverse put in by a producer because I know they've had many interviews of that scene with, you know, Diablo and Megan and yeah, yeah. Amanda, and they all love doing it. Um, and they all seem pretty on board with it. So 
I don't know. It may have been thrown in just to kind of, you know, be a little bit of a sex appeal, but I don't think it's completely unrealistic for that to happen between yeah. friends. Like, it remember when cool. we were in California? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about you? <laughs> uh, well, speaking as the woman here, I... Uh... Where? Oh, sorry. I thought I just saw hair under your arms. I was confused. Uh, no, you'd never <laughs> see hair under my arms. You missed a strip. Ah, I didn't miss the most important one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the anal strip. Go ahead. Oh my god, this will oh. not be the short, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for determining what the so, short's gonna be. Yeah, I know. Are uh, you asking it not to be? It literally <laughs> came in. Uh, I, I feel care. you should know, Mikey, by now. <laughs> Anyway, before I so rudely interrupted on Women's <clears throat> Month by men, ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody out there is listening to my views. We should just um, make her do these shows by herself. <laughs> you guys remember that Katy Perry song? And I, I was just looking it up today. It actually came out in 2008. But girls have been doing that all the time. Like, yeah. I mean, especially I remember, like, you know, we used to get into, back in the day, it was called the Roxy at 17, 18. Because we knew people who worked the door and stuff, and we knew bartenders there. And, like, you know, sometimes they're down a guy and he's dancing, and then, you know, girls just start making out. Like, we'd just be making out. And, like, one, to get attention, because we knew that a guy saw us doing that, they would come by his drinks. And two, just because we were there. Like, I know you. You're not some random person picking me up or whatever. I don't, I, I've not done that as an adult. Like, because I, I, I feel like back then I was still younger, but back then it was just normal. Like, everybody did it. Everybody did it. Like, I mean, all the girls did it. So oh, I, yeah, I, I made out with a girl once. It's gross. I mean, well, you might have made out with a girl. I don't know. <laughs> I hate being in that moment. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm thinking that now because I'm older. <laughs> we're like, you've seen it so many times. And this was like in the forefront when it, you know, when they were kind of more showing it, you know, like, what's that movie, Wild Things, you know, where it's, yeah. it's, Real it's intention. them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know what I mean, but you get a couple yeah. of those, and it's in that time frame of you know mm -hmm. in the two that early two thousands, and you're at, at one point you're thinking, oh God, really? Come on, <laughs> like you can't get through a part of this movie without that being the moment where like, like Lance does uh, not want to see that gay shit, folks. Clearly, <laughs> he doesn't care if you no. do it behind closed doors, but don't do it in front of them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer knows that her influence over needy, like Jennifer knows what oh, power yeah. she has over her and she knows how to get to her so she used it was a guy things. move it was a definitely yeah. a guy move thank you i know that's the Again, oh, that's shit. My, it's, 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 this male it's a stupid guy hey. like when you're in trouble because she was getting yelled at her and then she goes and goes no baby kiss me i was like i was like oh i've seen that before mm -hmm. <laughs> seen that he's, before. he's only seen it he's only seen yeah, it yeah yeah Never done it, folks. Never. You can't complain if your mouth is busy. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to interrupt, but I just I eventually want to get into what I think is the most disturbing part of the movie, and that is oh, the yeah. desecration of Jennifer's body. Uh, when they actually show what happened to her, mm -hmm. on paper, it seems just like, oh, they killed her. But there's something so disturbing about it it comes off almost like a rape, even though they don't rape her. It's very uncomfortable to watch. And I, I, Olivia was watching the movie with me and I didn't want her to see that part, not because of the stabbing, because they don't really even show them stabbing her, but it is very like, um, what's the word? It's triggering. It it's, it's, it's visceral. disturbing. Did you guys think that the song they were singing, because it's an 80s song oh and it's actually God. a disturbing like 80s song? Like it's yeah. like, give me it makes it more because they're having fun. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. But like when they're singing the it's song, where, yeah, yeah, it, it's the it's, comical attitude towards it. But it, maybe that's what obviously the director and the writer is kind of. I mean, it's supposed to be a comedy horror, you know. And the fact that they're singing, you know, the phone number song, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's not even. I don't even think that's a, that it was intentional to be funny because that's what makes it even more disturbing is that she's pleading for her life and she's crying and. And while she's not being raped, Mikey, you're right. She is being penetrated in some way, right? And she's there against her will. And they're all like... She's powerless. Right? And they they have the control. Yeah. 
it's very much like and she's even wearing like a white fluffy coat like she's lamb being thrown into the lion's den it starts off when she says something and they're like oh you don't have to talk and that's when like the tone shifts severely for that scene and we're like watching this movie that's kind of lighthearted, even though people are dying but they're kind of dying in like a horror comedy 90s kind of way but then (laughs) it's like uh this isn't it's not a bad thing about the movie it's just very it's a hard scene to watch I remember watching the theater and feeling very uncomfortable watching it and you know people will say Megan Fox is acting as wooden but like she sells the scene and she makes it uncomfortable to watch because she's just she's definitely playing the character though she's a girl she's a child at that moment you really see her not as a sex object you see her as a victim and as a she for lack of a better word they they they're you know teenagers she's a child and she's being violated like this and it's just it is so sad and then their their callous attitudes toward it because they they want to be fam- they, I'm sorry they want to be the singer from maroon five both of you guys want to give up your uh, last feelings about this movie oh i love it it's a classic i love watching it i never get bored of it i give it four and a half stars no i'm gonna Ooh. give it four stars because they killed jennifer yeah <laughs> Like that's the only disappointing part because I really feel like they they could have used more of a uh, girl power moment with that, but whatever, it is what it is. I mean, we at least we got Adam Brody and his horrible performance as a front man, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, no, I love Jennifer's body. I have I why the fuck didn't I put that shirt on for this recording? I'll never know because I should have and I didn't. Oh, you I have a shirt? Oh yeah. I have my little my little Jennifer's body crop top. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of green in it, so I don't know if it would have oh. put it well anyways. <laughs> uh, but that's from Eye Candy. Shout out to Eye Candy, who makes the cutest little crop tops for horror fans. So uh, as uh, before we end everything, uh, as tradition, Aid, let us know how the year went during this 2009 year. Oh, oh my God. God. No, so I, there were a lot of movies in that year. I'm, it was not a bad year, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> and Mikey <laughs> might, you might agree with me here. I love um, this part. This is my favorite first, part. I first I, I lost it. So that month, um, September of 2009, also um, we had we had Jennifer's body, but we had the Human Centipede, we had Wreck Two, Pandora, and we had um, how we had Sorority Row, which I actually do like that one, and a yeah. Children of the Corn remake. Um, <laughs> and this is just that month, which I thought was interesting. And then the rest of the year, we have uh, movies like. Uh, the Loved Ones, which we've done on the show before, one of my favorites. Um, horror movies. Oh, here it is. Sorry, I lost my list. But we've got a lot of really like, crazy ones. We've got the remake for The Last House of the Left, speaking of which, Mikey. So the remake for that one came out that year. The Descent 2, the My Bloody Valentine remake came out. House of the Devil, which is another great one. We should have talked about that because we had some good ones. Drag Me to Hell, uh, the Friday the 13th remake, Halloween 2, the... Uh, the Rob Zombie, The Collector, Splice. We should do Splice actually one time. That movie's fucked up. Orphan. So uh, The Cabin Fever 2, Rancid, but uh, Grace. But I think a lot, like a lot of things that uh, that kind of mimic Jennifer's body in a way, but are sort of like a little bit crazier is the loved one. So if you guys haven't listened to that episode, I think you should. And then finally, Offspring starring our Pollyanna McIntosh. Because remember, Offspring and Women or the woman are both written by um, Jack Ketchum. Uh, mm. Daybreakers, Dead Snow, The Nightmares in Red, White, and Blue uh, documentary, which is a great documentary if you haven't seen it on horror. And our favorite Antichrist, where we get to see Willem Dafoe jack off uh, blood. Yay. Ooh, yay. <laughs> I know. Have fun. Nice. And that is your year in horror in 2009. Um, so uh, basically, uh, at the end of this, we basically gonna give you a little bit of uh, our Patreon, which uh, you guys should check out. Um, if you guys want to become members, or if you know anybody that wants to become a member and likes our stuff, hit them up, tell them to come out, do all that. We do have a YouTube out there. Uh, if you want to check us out uh, visually, you should go to YouTube uh, Slashers uh, Podcast. That'll be a fun little thing. Uh, it's a little bit shorter than the actual um, Spotify stuff. So if you want to let listen to a longer version of us or we, you don't want to listen to too much of us <laughs> you can go to there um, we have you uh you know put out very well in every little area uh we do have a red bubble so if you want to get uh one of our new t-shirts that's coming out right now uh that mikey was so awesome to get for our design uh mm-hmm. who was the designer of that again 
Corn Oddity on Instagram. Nice. Yay. And then, uh, uh, what is it? Redbubble? Slasherspod.redbubble.com. Uh, Patreon is patreon.com slash slasherspod. You can also get a hold of us on our Instagram. Uh, and it's Heart and a Half Show for Mikey. It's a pathological aid on there as well. And then me, I'm going to be <laughs> uh, zombie versus hate. Hey, sometimes I remember shit. Sometimes I don't. No, I, know, really fun. I love it. No, oh my <laughs> God. Okay. Yes. Remember, this is what happens when Lance is allowed to host. But yes, it'd be pathologically ADE take, for me. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. I know. Yeah. Even, when, even when you write things down for him, isn't he adorable? <laughs> That's his heart. Hey, I like to go rogue. That's how it I is, know. folks. We know. But that, that being said, uh, goodbye, good die, and die. <laughs> Goodbye, don't die. Goodbye. There's that whale song. <laughs> Good job, oh, Lance. God. Yay. <laughs>